Welcome to action from the Motormart Volkswagen Challenge from the Kalani International Raceway. A nice field of cars coming all the way from around the country to be part and parcel of the Extreme Festival here at Kalani International Raceway. And we're going to see some big action here between Class A, B and C. Stian Creel might be the man to beat you. He, of course, originally came from Cape Town. And, oh, how's that for a start from Lyle Ramsey? Wow! Trying to go up the inside of the stricken car that was on there of Rory Atkinson. And unfortunately got caught out by clipping him as he tried to avoid it. Stian Creel coming from the back of the field. Keep an eye on him as he gets into turn one. Ramsey's got problems. The Munro car pulling to the sideline and some damage on that car. He's not going to let him finish off. This is Jacques Smith's point of view from the start. As you can see, he gets off the line quite nicely and heads down towards KFM corner for the first time. Smith in full flight for Class B as he heads down in there and looking to keep out the rest of this pack. Not going to be easy. He's certainly going to have his hands full of the rest of this field. Holiday Senior and Junior in there as well. And look out for the Class C competitors. It's going to be a big fight there between Christian De Vette and Philip Cruiser. And look out for Gossman, who's joined Class C for this weekend. Wow, in the background, sideways action coming through there. You can see them all starting to sort things out as they come up onto the braking markers. But it's uh, Senior, by the looks of things, applying the pressure and closing down onto Jacques Smith. Then you can see the rest of that pack. Unfortunately, John Johnson battling a little bit down here in that Golf 1. It's the only Golf 1 in the pack. And he's going to have his hands cut out with all of these polos, left, right, and center, and trying to find a way through as they go down into rows. Rose Foundation sweep the Motormart car there coming through there. Modango having a fantastic start on the back end of Johnson as they come up through Jaguar Sweep for the first time. Look how tight it is between these Volkswagen Challenge machines. Absolutely nothing in it. It's good to have these cars down here because remember they, they run a GTI series down here which is all Volkswagen product. Oh, and a Volkswagen running wide out of that turn five. You can see just not where he wanted to be. It looks like Wayne Masters in the Performance Masters car going off track and onto the dirty stuff. This is a super rip. Sian Creel has disappeared at the front end and getting away from the charge from Nick Clark. Valdi Mikes is on his tail. Look at there. A maneuver from Atkinson squeezing through. And Kraus unfortunately having to go to the long way around turn one KFM corner. He tucks in behind him and Atkinson now leads out for the battle for fourth place as they come down on the breaking markers into turn two. Hard on the inside. Oh, Valdi with a great move. Catching Nick Clark out there in the suspension machine. He used the motorcycle line and he's got through turn two and now leads things out in terms of that little battle, but it's not done yet. They're trying to close down on Stian Creel, who's getting away. Remember, Stian Creel used to participate in that GTI challenge that I was talking about earlier on, and he's now back at his uh, what was originally his home track. Coming from Cape Town, he's going to know the circuit uh, pretty well. Valny Mikey's has raced here in the past. Nick Clark has done a couple of laps around here too, but the two of them don't seem to have an answer to Creel just yet. They go through Jaguar Sweep onto that back straight away, and now it's everything she's got behind them. Keep an eye out on Masters and Atkinson starting to get back into the field. Atkinson has made a lot of ground up. We're going to look out for Wayne Masters as he went off, remember, on the last lap, heading down to this turn. Oh, bits and pieces of car flying there. Straight into the, uh, yeah, I was going to say into the 46 car there. And you can see just some issues coming for uh, Quinton Needham. He had to try and avoid the debris that got thrown up, but he fortunately just got out the way. Now they come out of the sweep, onto the main straight away again and heading down towards the uh, turn one KFM. There's a move, Nick Clark pulling out of the slipstream. Is he good enough on the brakes? Look at Atkinson, how good is he on the brakes? He's closed right up, unbelievable there from Atkinson to get up there and side by side from Clark. And look at Valdi Mikey's having to go the long way around turn one. Very similar to what we saw there with Wayne. Wayne Masters, there he is, up and moving through the field rapidly. Good driving there and a great recovery. Let's see if he's able to get a little bit further up the field. Back to class B. Further back in the field. Oh, that's uh, Junior. No, it's not. It's Joachim. Roberto Joachim running wide. The two red cars just getting a little bit out of shape there. And one of them goes extremely wide onto the dirty stuff. Can he come back on? It looks like he might be able to get back on there. But unfortunately, he's lost about four or five positions. The 44 car of Dion Holiday Jr. now having to fight things out. Remember, I uh, beg your pardon there in terms of Dion Holiday Jr. He's got new livery on that car. That's why I thought it was him in the red car. But it's actually him now fighting on the back end here. And with Captain Dick, Chris Dale, and him having a magnificent battle as they get onto the short straight, the KFM straight, into Jaguar Sweep and sideways from Smith. Senior, then it's Dale, then you've got Junior. The holidays are in the house and they're not having any holidays down here in Cape Town. That is for sure. Luan Ruiz behind them. Back to Class A. Look at this battle for second, third, and fourth place. Valdi Mikey's hanging on. Nick Clark running to run a little bit wide to avoid the attentions from Rory Atkinson. Atkinson looking for a way through. He comes side by side and gets through. Wow, what a drive there from Atkinson. Coming out of turn five, Cape Town corner, and he's got through into third place. He's going for second. Oh, the posi drive car, the most positive car at the moment, getting away from everybody else. But Valdi Mikey's under pressure. And is he going to be able to get through? No, he's just trying to squeeze out the attentions from Atkinson. Atkinson's around his outside. He's going to cut back and see if he can get onto the inside now, heading to turn two. 
absolutely nothing in it between those three cars. Brilliant racing here in the uh, Motormark Volkswagen Challenge. Behind them, you can see closing in is Wayne Krauss. And just in the background, keep an eye out on Masters. Masters is not too far off the back end of this little battle. If they continue to fight like they are, they're going to slow each other down. Well, no slowing down Rory Atkinson. Around the outside of the kink and up into second place. The BHIT machine moving through the field very rapidly. And what a recovery considering the fact he was stuck in the wrong gear on the start line and got tagged by uh, Ramsey as they started this race. Coming through Jaguar Sweep now. Nick Clark is just waiting for a chance to uh, maybe put his car in the way. Kraus goes through. Behind him, it's uh, his brother. Sean Kraus and Wayne Kraus trying to close down on this battle, but they're not quite there yet. Can you imagine if we get another two cars involved in this one? Oh, on the brakes, down into Cape Town Corner. Here we go. Late braking from Voldy Monkeys, but not late enough. And some more bodywork coming off those cars. Sure, Nick Clark's machine is just losing bodywork left, right, and center. It looks like he's losing a little bit more as they come out of Cape Town. Oh, no, the Agro Building Projects car going off there. Sean Krauss running wide. Little commentator's curse and saying he was coming through the field nicely. He just made a little bit of an outbreaking maneuver there on himself and ran off the track. Come side by side with Smallburger as they come back on. And you can see, oh, not done just yet in that little battle. Here we go. Further up the field and coming down into the braking zone. This is Junior on the inside of Dale. Dale, unfortunately, has not got the line right there. He might be able to positive drive around the outside, but not if Junior's got the drive coming out of Cape Town. Looks like he might have missed a gear, though. Oh, I think he did. He missed a gear, and Dale comes back at him. That is brilliant stuff. Chris Dale not giving up here. Junior and Dale side by side. Jock Smith under attack from Senior. This is for Class B honors, remember. In the background, we're keeping an eye out as well for Christian Devet and for Philip Cruiser fighting in the Class Cs. Remember, those guys in 1,600 16 valves on these incredible Hankook tires that everybody's running now. Here we go, down onto the breakers, into turn two. Oh, there you go, there you go. These are the guys we we're expecting to see. The 33 car under massive braking all the way down there. And Devet squeezing him out, looking for a chance to get through there. Devet leads out Class Cs. In the background, you can see Philip Cruiser just in the back there, looking to close things down. So Christian Devet fighting with Cyan Moodley here, one of the Class B contenders. Here comes Cruiser. Cruiser just a little bit off the pace there, but the ATE car is going well and looking for a second place option. He's looking to maintain a, a decent start to the season for Class C's, and they really are getting to grips with things. There's little 1,616 valve cars starting to get to grips with some of the 2-litre 8 valve cars in Class B. And there goes Senior, all over the back of Jacques Smith. Jacques Smith hanging on for dear life. This is fantastic. Mo Dangle having a brilliant drive in the Motormart car, all over the back end and looking for a way through. He's got Gareth Lyke in there. He's also got Roberto Joachim, who's now recovered. And there's Gavin Ross. And look at that, Ross. Just having to give way there to the two Class B competitors as they came through, the two leaders getting through on the Norbrake car. Eagle one in the house and uh, having to uh, just uh, defend and uh, fight off the attentions from the cars out there. And oh, Dangle runs wide. And in the background, we got someone who's completely sideways. Oh, this is brilliant stuff. Absolutely amazing stuff. And I think the guys in Cape Town are thinking to themselves, is this GTI challenge or is this Volkswagen challenge? The action is almost identical. If you're a local, you'd be thinking it's GTI Challenge. If you know these cars, of course you know it's the Motormart Volkswagen Challenge. Yo, it's such big action. John Johnson forcing a couple of guys right. Joachim dives on the inside. Great opportunistic driving coming out of Roberto Joachim after he went off earlier on. He's now made up some ground and he's looking to try and get into that top 20 overall. Let's have a look at this from the Munro point of view. This is Lyle Ramsey's car on the start. There you can see just... Oh! Not enough room to go through there on the car in front of him of Rory Atkinson and the pit wall. And you can see as he takes off, unfortunately, the car just doesn't want to go. Just not getting enough and <laughs> onto two wheels. What does he think his name's Terry Grant? Putting on a little stunt show there in the Munro Polo. All right, we're on board here and looking back from Alma Cruzner's point of view. Nice to see the lady driver back into Volkswagen Challenge. She's been out for a while. And this is Steon Creel starting to close in on the back and looking for a way through. Probably going to make it pretty easy. He's on the final lap. Comes up on the inside, gets through on Alna, and heads down into Rose Foundation Sweep, heading up onto that KFM straight towards Jaguar with no one even in sight. Pit Porchita just behind them. Porchita and Cruiser having a bit of a fight on their own for 25th and 26th place there in Class B, but 25th and 26th, of course, overall. Now they get onto that back straight away. Green flags all the way down to Cape Town Corner. And under braking, Roberto Joachim's going to be closed down here, I think, by the hard charge coming from Stian Creel. Creel is literally going to go to the flag unchallenged. A couple of guys going to be shaking their heads and thinking, what can they do to try and close things down here between Stian Creel and the rest of this Class A field? Atkinson at this stage hanging on, but can he keep up Nick Clark and Baldy Mikey's? The checkered flag is on standby. And another positive posi drive coming out of Stian Creel. Checkered flag comes out and race one goes to him. 
in the background. Look how close it was. A little bit closer than what we expected there. He must have rolled out there. Atkinson hangs on to beat up Nick Clark for Class A honours in the top three. This is Jacques Smith's point of view as he heads down towards Cape Town Corner for the last time. He's going to have to keep his eye on Senior. Senior going to try something? No. Unfortunately, he's too far back. Not going to be enough there for Dion Holiday Jr. and Senior to make any inroads to Jacques Smith. Senior was closest. Let's see what he can do in race number two. He backs out as he comes out of Cape Town Corner. Jacques Smith going to have a clean run to the line. And it looks like Luan Ruiz has got through there for third place. He's found a way past Chris Dell and Junior in the closing stages to come through for the third in Class B. Checking flag out for Jacques Smith. A great effort there from him. And what a fantastic first race for the Motomart Volkswagen Challenge. Class A, Dion Creel, Rory Atkinson ahead of Nick Clark. It's Valdi Mikey's Wayne Krauss, Masters, Gammy and Smallberger, the top eight. In Class B, a super effort from Jacques Smith, fighting off Dion Holiday Sr. Then it was Luan Ruiz, Chris Dell, Dion Holiday Jr., Mohamed Suleiman, Christian Devet, and Philip Cruiser. They were the top two in Class C. Let's catch up with Rory Atkinson and find out what went wrong on the start line. Bad start, mistake on my fault. Um, Paul Lyle had nowhere to go in the Munro car. And my BHRT car, just I wasn't in gear and the lights were very quick. Um, so terrible start, but I had a good run through the field. Congrats to Stian, who won it. And the guys had a good race out there. Let's find out from Dion Holiday what he's going to do about Jacques Smith in heat two. Uh, it was it was like uh, enjoyable. Luckily, me and Jacques got away from the pack. Um, I think that was the important thing. We got a bit lonely here towards the end. But yeah, uh, you know, to get away from the pack is, is maybe better being stuck in the pack. So yeah, we enjoyed it a lot. Great race win for the Motormart car and Christian Devet. We battled a little bit yesterday, sorted out the car, um, it was a good race, um, I didn't see the second place uh, guy, it was a little bit lonely in the front but it was a good race, uh, just a big 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 thank you to the Needhams for all their help and especially to all our sponsors, make this uh, possible, especially to Motormart, Mohammed, thanks a lot and let's see if we can make a double. Well, a bit of preparation and a couple of little changes to be made in terms of Class A, I'm sure, to try and close things down there on Stian Krill, who seems to be dominant here in Cape Town. But of course, it is his ex-home track, so uh, if you're going to have a little bit of uh, track knowledge, that'll help him out. Let's see if it's going to help. Not coming from pole position. That is Rory Atkinson's here for race number two. And Atson Atkinson trying to close things down and just shut out Stian Krill into KFM corner. But Krill's got the inside line and he maintains the whole shot into turn one. Good start here from the rest of the field as Class A goes through. Craig Gammy around the outside. He's side by side there with Needham. Just behind them, Kraus, who's back on track after having an off-track excursion. This time, yet again, Jacques Smith looking for the opportunity to get the whole shot. But this time, wow! Senior goes around the outside and Dion Holiday Senior has got the whole shot ahead of Jacques Smith as they come out of KFM corner. The dying light here in the closing stages of this race day means that these guys are going to have to fight hard not only with the light but hopefully get across the line before it gets dark here in Cape Town. Side by side, Roberto Joachim. You can see on the inside there, Chris Dale. Here comes Mo Dangle. And another great start in that pack as you come through for Almero Van Eck. Unfortunately, he didn't finish the first heat. He got stuck on the outside of Jaguar Sweep. But he's now on the outside <laughs> looking to uh, attack here as they go down into Rose Foundation. Closing right onto the back end of Needham as they come through there. Then you've got John Johnson. Gammy uh, just a bit off there, unfortunately. Not quite where he wants to be. And Gareth Lack. Gareth Lack having a super effort and trying to find a way through but hasn't quite got there just yet. Class B's, oh, how's Johnson? Sideways in the Gulf 1, going through the Jaguar sweep. There in the background, keep an eye out on the Class C's as well as they come through there. It's Andy Gossman who's made it out this time, ahead of Cruiser. And I think just up the road, leading things out of the moment, is Christian Devet, race one winner. So you've got the three Class C competitors back in the mix and looking for a chance to take honours here. Oh, Miravanek is looking to drive through the polos. Oh, and the two of them run wide. That's not what you want. Mo Dangle getting forced off the road there in the Motormart car by the Eagle One car of Almero Van Eck. And uh, hopefully both of them can get back on track. It looks like they'll be able to. Yes, they will. Dangle gets on just ahead of Almero. Down into turn one. This is A. And look at Masters. Absolutely lit. The two Waynes going at it there. And behind them, also getting sideways, La Ramsey. Good to see they got the Munro car sorted out now for race number two. But Masters and Kraus were literally side by side and lit up. And in a little bit of a sympathy coming out of the Munro car. Exactly the same maneuver coming out of Lyle Ramsey. A little bit better and a little bit cleaner coming out of turn two now as they head down towards the Sweep and Rose Foundation. And you can see that these Class A competitors are not holding anything back here. Lights are on just to make sure that uh, when they get to the slower cars, they'll be able to get through there. Needham closing in on the back end of Ramsey. The Motormart car fighting with that Munro car. And oh, Kraus runs wide! Wayne Kraus runs wide, opens up the door. Will those two squeeze through? I think they might. 
There's going to be a possibility of two cars getting through there on Wayne Kraus. Let's have a look as they come through. Yes, definitely Ramsey has got through. And if I look in the background, yeah, I think there's an awesome opportunity that was opened up there when Wayne Kraus ran wide. Two cars squeezing him out. Creel leads out. Atkinson in second. Valdi Mikey's in third. Locking the brakes down into turn five. Locking brakes as well out of Needham as he tries to close things down onto the back end of Ramsey. So Needham and Ramsey did get through there on Kraus. Confirmation of that maneuver that I thought might happen coming out of the Jag sweep. Down on the braking markers, look at this, absolutely side by side, and Creel looking for a chance, can't find it just yet. And Atkinson hangs on and changes the lead into turn one KFM. So it's Atkinson now from Creel. Creel on the back end, BHIT versus Posi Drive. Further back, where is Jacques Smith? Jacques Smith's gone missing. Jacques Smith has gone missing somewhere. I'm not quite sure he's ended up. There he is. Further back in the field. He's made a mistake somewhere. Probably down in Cape Town corner. It's the only plot we didn't really see him. Roberto Joachim's got through. So has Junior. So it looks like Luan Ruiz in second place. Joachim in third. Junior's in four. And then only do we see Jacques Smith. No, in fact, Chris Dale ahead of Jacques Smith as well. So Jacques Smith, race one winner with some work to do now in race number two. Seems able to find a way through there on Dale, first of all. But uh, not the way that car's going. He came out of turn two and ran wide. Much tighter line from Chris Dale. And look, speaking of tight lines, that's pretty close between Joachim and Junior. MN response machine looking for a way through there. And Roberto Joachim having to go defensive into Jack Sweep. Very tight between those two. Dale, then Jacques Smith. And just between the two polos, it is John Johnson, Shane Cruen by the looks of things, and Gareth Like as they head onto that back straight away. Leaders already down into KFM corner. Look at Atkinson, he's pulling away. Steon Creel doesn't seem to have an answer here. In fact, I think Creel's got a problem. Creel is falling by the wayside here, and it looks like it might, I think it's possibly going to be a gearbox issue. Similar to what he had at SWAT Corps, we'll have to keep an eye on that car, but he's definitely falling by the wayside. Yes, indeed, that is Nick Clark going to go around the outside of him, trying to find a way through. No, he cuts the door and shuts it and slams it firmly in the face of Clark and Ramsey. Those two youngsters are going to have to find a way through now on Creel. Creel move. Oh, no, Creel's got problems. Creel's got some big issues here. There you go, Nick Clark squeezes him out, so does Ramsey. I'll be very happy to see Creel behind them, considering the fact and the pace that he had in the first heat. Master's trying to close things down. Here we go, back to Class C, and it is Devet. But look at Gossman's car starting to smoke. I wonder if that engine issue he had in heat number one that didn't allow him out has come back and is going to haunt him now for heat number two. He's got second place at the moment. It's Philip Cruiser in third place in the ATE brake machine, but whew, are they going to be able to survive? Speaking of survival, that is exactly what Clark and Ramsey are doing right now with Creel trying to survive an ailing car and see if he can keep in with those two youngsters that are fighting for what is now third place on track. It's Valdi in second. This man leads out. Atkinson doing a great job in the BHIT bulk logistics polo. Getting away from Valdi Mankies. Locking up a brakes there from Smallberger. Gammy and right on their tail is the 12th car of Ackerman. He comes through there very nicely. Mark Ackerman, haven't really mentioned him throughout the show, but great effort from him in one of the ex-Pepper racing cars. They come down on the breakers there. You can see Luan Ruiz now getting away from Joaquin. Then it's uh, Junior, Chris Dale. Jacques Smith still hasn't found a way through there in the dirt nurse car. Gonna have to find a clean line if he gets a dirt nurse car through there. That's for sure. But he hasn't found one yet as they head towards turn two. Oh, Senior's having a great day in the saddle. So is Luan Ruiz so far. Joaquin hanging on for third. Junior behind him. Pretty evenly matched right now. Maybe just waiting for a bit later in the race to uh, show their cards. Let's see what's going to happen now. Oh, what a move! Ramsey holding nothing back after not making it out, to, not even to turn one. He only survived to turn one in race number one. He's now starting to make his way through the field rapidly and could potentially be in a podium position. He's just gone into third place. I wonder if he can catch monkeys by the end of this race. Not if Nick Clark's going to hound him. Look at how he's hounding him down into Cape Town Corner and straight back up the inside. Brilliant stuff there from Clark and Ramsey. These two have gone at it uh, all season last year and it looks like it's uh, the battle resuming here in Cape Town. So Atkinson leading right now, comfortable ahead of Mikey's. Mikey's the same thing because these two are fighting too hard to uh, avoid closing down on uh, Valdi Mikey's. They've got to stop fighting and try and work together if they want to catch Mikey's. And maybe uh, that'll exactly what will happen. Here comes Class B down there. That's the first two. Luan Ruiz in second place. Joachim in third. Here comes Junior. Look at that. He's like, oh man, he's like a trailer on the back end of that polo. Roberto Joachim under attack. There's Dale. Oh, great move from Chris Dale. Jacques Smith and Chris Dale going at it. They must be loving the battle they're having. It's so evenly matched between those two. Christian Devet with Gossman still on his tail. Then Mohamed Suleim and there comes Cruiser. Third place at the moment in Class C's. And he dives up the inside of the third Motomart car out there, of course, of Robbie De Silva. Someone's run wide. Someone ran off the circuit there and there's a lot of dust. I'm not quite sure who it was. I think it might have been Luan Ruiz. Let's have a look and see. As they close in. No, Ruiz is still there. 
I saw some issues on that car, gonna have to keep an eye on that one because I think Lewin Ruiz might be in a bit of trouble. Let's keep an eye on that one for the rest of this race. Here comes uh, Senior on the inside of Gavin Ross. Can he get through and put a car between himself and the second place man? Yes, he can. Gavin Ross running wide. Looks like Ross has got some problems as well. It might have actually been Ross who ran wide out of Cape Town corner. Didn't quite see which car got back on track there. Joachim side by side with Junior as they came out of the sweep. Heading down to Rose Foundation. Who's going to have what it takes as they get down into what is turn three here at this magnificent Kilani International Raceway? Oh, the cars are off in the background, and I think it's going to be one of those two I was just speaking about. Yes, Joachim ran wide. He gets back on track just ahead of Cristal, who manages to keep out Jacques Smith. So biggest loser there by the looks of things going down the field, unfortunately, is going to be uh, Shane Cruen. Shane Cruen losing out a little bit of ground further up the field. Look at, oh, this is brilliant. That is Ramsey, who's closed onto the back end of Baldi Mikey's. I wonder if Mikey's has got a problem here. We're into the closing stages, and Mikey's now having to go defensive. We're in traffic as well. Oh, this is going to be epic. Right up on here and moving out of the way as they come through thick and fast in Class A on the back end of the field. Ruin Ruiz with a problem. Oh, that is such unlucky. Oh, man, not what he wanted. Ruiz doing such a great job, and unfortunately having to park it on the sideline. Looks like that engine is gone. So he parks on the sideline and he's out. We're on the final lap. Mikey's under attack here from Lyle Ramsey. There is some traffic. Can Ramsey use the, the traffic to his advantage? The first car they're coming up on is Pit Kokita. They come out of Jag. Onto that back straightaway now, looking for an opportunity to use the slipstream. Valdi Mikey's gets out of that slipstream with the first car. And look at that. Ramsey dives straight into his slipstream. Heading down towards the braking markers. That is the leader. That is Atkinson just ahead. Ramsey is going to have to go around the high side of Cape Town Corner. Mikey's going to force him wide. Mikey's under braking. This is a little bit there. This might be a cutback here from Lyle Ramsey. Yes, look at that. Ramsey and Mikey side by side as they come out of Cape Town Corner. Here we go. To the line. The drag race is on. It's going to be Atkinson who's going to take the win. But look in the background. Second place is going to be so tight. And it's Ramsey. Can you believe it? Ramsey just beats out Mikey's by literally the bonnet of that car as they came across to finish up this incredible Volkswagen Challenge race. Once again, they have delivered. Motor Mart are going to be happy with that. In the background, we look at the rest of Class A coming through there with Clark and Masters. And now let's go back to the battle for Class B. It is Senior out front. But can he hang on? Is there going to be any change up here heading into these fun? Yes, there is. It's Junior going side by side with his dad. Dion versus Dion down into Cape Town. And it is the MN response machine who has got through. Monitornet on response have got to the lead and it's going to be Junior to beat out Senior for Class B honors here in the second race of the Motorbot Volkswagen Challenge at Kilani International Raceway. Third place, is it going to be Joachim? Yes, it is. Joachim beats out Cristal and Jacques Smith. What great action from the Motormart Volkswagen Challenge. Class A honors to Rory Atkinson, Lyle Ramsey, Valdi Mikey's ahead of Nick Clark, Wayne Masters, Dion Creel, Derek Smallberger, and Gammy, your top eight. In Class B, what a dice to the line there. Junior beating Senior to the line, Joachim in third. It's Chris Dell beating Jacques Smith with Mohamed Sulim. And then you've got Christian Devet and Philip Cruiser, the top two again in Class C. Championship standings, it's Atkinson who leads things out. Over Steon Creel, Jacques Smith in third, and Valdi Mikey's down in fourth, just ahead of Chris Dell. Let's catch up with Steon Creel after a great weekend. Yes, it's nice being back at our home track. Um, the car went well. We had some issues after race one where the alternator seized up three laps to the end. And we replaced that after race one. And then we picked up that we have a vibration coming from the car. We, we thought it was maybe motor related. We checked everything and we just found that there's a, it's a little bit of an issue inside the gearbox. Jacques Smith, very good effort from the Dirt Nurse car. We've just had such amazing support here and um, and yeah, I mean the car's been really, really good. Uh, qualified really well this morning and uh, managed to put the car in pole. Um, and yeah, I'll take the victory. So it's just been an amazing event. Cape Town is such an amazing place and we just love coming here. And um, yeah, I've been really blessed with some good fortune. And um, yeah, the competition has been good. The holiday has um, kept me honest and yeah, we're really looking forward to the next race at Midvall. So um, hopefully we can continue this and uh, take the lead in the championship. All this action proudly brought to you by Motormont.